Okay, so for the experiment that is also related to this maximum power transfer theorem, um, I brought some multimeter and I've also brought a power supply. And so what I also brought is a resistor, this one here, that we will use as the internal resistance of the source because our lab power supply here um, has some voltage regulation. So there is some inner resistance in there, but it's kind of regulated out. So this will always try to keep the source voltage constant. So this will be the inner resistance of my source. And this is a variable resistor. So um, if you look at the back, it's some ceramic, I think, body. And there's a wire wound around this um, that has yeah, pretty high resistance in comparison to usual wire. And then you can rotate this knob and this will um, rotate some contact there at the back so that, they, that, so that you can um, change the resistance. So what we can do at first maybe is, uh, let me take this to the side, is um, measure this resistance. So I have the multimeter here. Um, okay. Oops, the audio dropped. And I will connect this here. And so uh, you can see at the back, there are three connectors. So if we measure from here to here, it will be always the full resistance. So we can try it out. And there's something printed there that it's, um, as you can see, 25 ohm, 20. Oops, there the audio dropped again. Um, so if yes. I measure from here to here, yeah, and I think that's finally gone. So still, I thought this experiment, this video is useful. So I decided to um, do a voiceover, um, let's say, do some reactionary video onto my own content and uh, explain what I've done there because without the audio, I think it's not very useful at all. So I there measured the full resistance of this variable resistor. It was 25 ohm. And they are now between these two ports or these two, uh, at this port between these two terminals, I measure the variable resistance. And as you can see, if I turn this knob, I can get um, almost any resistance between something small close to zero and something close to the 25 ohm, the nominal value of this variable resistor. Okay. And so this variable resistor I will use as a load resistance for this experiment or I've used as a load resistance for this experiment. And currently I'm setting up the lab power supply, the voltage supply with the source voltage. And I, I know the source voltage, but I've not shown it to the students in the room. And I've also not shown it to the audience of this live stream. And in a minute uh, or in some moment, you will see that I've also blocked the display um, of this lab power supply with some sheet of paper. So there is a certain voltage set. I know it, but students don't know it. And the idea of this experiment is to uh, measure the different voltages and different currents through the load resistor. And from this, calculate the necessary source voltage that is needed uh, to get these values. And so next step in this experiment is to set up the circuit. So these are the two terminals from my lab power supply. And then um, as mentioned, I need some inner resistor for the source, some series resistance. This is this golden one. And I need to have this variable resistor as a variable load resistance, this is this big brown one with the gray knob in front. And so they are connected in series. And now at first I connect the lab power supply. And then you can see there's already a current flowing through the circuit, um, a quarter of an ampere. 
quarter of an amp 245 milliampere that we already have as a current and so my lab power supply which is very nice allows me to measure current and with this additional multimeter uh, the second display there that you see i will measure the voltage drop across the load resistance so the voltage drop across this variable um, resistor and so the idea now is if i turn this gray knob then for higher voltages or oh, there you can see my watch uh, so for <laughs> for higher resistance values i get more resistance i get more um, for higher resistance i get more voltage across this series resistor or uh, across this load resistor but we get less current and for less resistance we get of course more current and less voltage so with with this experiment we should be able to find the point where we have maximum power being delivered to this load um, and at this point we should have exactly half of the source voltage half of the short circuit current um, and maximum power as said being delivered to this load so to note down all the values i need to have a table and so I'm opening up some LibreOffice program to have a table to note down the values. And then my colleague Francesco uh, will assist me in writing down all these values. But as you can see, obviously the program is not really working. It's not opening up the table. There's nothing happening there. So um, I remembered, yeah, there is a problem on my computer, on my laptop with this LibreOffice program. So in any case let's restart this camera program in a smaller resolution so we can have the camera view on this side and try to have a different program for the table to note down all these values um, so what also works nicely is open office even if it's still very old so now i'm opening an open office spreadsheet and wait until this loads and so then in this table we can have a row or no better a column a column for the voltages the voltage across the load resistor and we can have um, a second column for the measured current but let's rearrange the windows on the display in a way that we can have the table and the camera view which is the rear camera of my surface laptop at the very same time so as said what we can measure and what we can note down for different values of this load resistor of this variable load resistor is to measure the load voltage um, and the current through this circuit and i've not doubt, noted down any units but of course the current and as we as we measure there is an ampere and the load voltage will be directly in volt so from these two values we can calculate the load resistance which is simply the voltage divided by the current and the product of the two will give us the load power and so yeah what, what you would expect is if we have a very small resistor we will have full current but almost no voltage so there will be no power uh, if we have the full resistance value we will have a very large voltage but no current so there will be no power and some maximum of power will be somewhere in between so um, yeah we start with some rather high load resistance which is um, set to almost the full value i think and in this case we just have um yeah we have 3.66 volt and we just have 0 0.148 ampere or 0 0.17 so francesco uh, as my assistant and colleague is noting down the values and i'm changing the values of the resistor and so we are we are now i'm i'm turning the resistance down and we just note down different values and as you can see if i move this knob a little bit of the variable resistor uh, we go down from 25 or maybe in steps of 
I don't know, two, two ohm, three ohm, something like this, down. So the voltage across the load also goes down and the current through this circuit increases step by step. And this is now what we just repeat and continue um, for, for different values of the resistance. So as you can see, the load voltage decreases the current through our load resistor and also through this uh, golden second resistor, which is used as the internal series resistance of the source also increases. And I'm not sure, I think this is maybe already um, a quarter maybe of the full circle of the full rotation of this. And now it just takes some time um, to, to take all these measurements. And of course, after you rotate the knob, you always need to wait a bit until the values at the instrument somehow settle and um, until you get a clear picture and a clear value that you can write down. And I think this is maybe already half the way through, something like this, maybe may, maybe almost. Um, and yeah, <laughs> it's it, 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 it would probably be nicer to automate this measurement, um, to have some resistor that you could ch maybe change by a motor drive, something like this, and some lab power supply or some Amper meter and some voltmeter that would automatically um, note, take the values and transmit them, send, mit, uh, send them to some measurement automation program in the computer, put them in the table like this. So what we are doing here is just manual measurement automation. Um, in the final video, I will of course also do a chapter mark. So feel free to jump to the next chapter if you say, okay, this is this is really um, boring here. What happens here? Just taking a bunch of values. Unfortunately, I was not really able to speed up the video here um, in OBS because every time I would change the speed of the video, it would just start the playback from scratch from the beginning. So, but now we have reached almost the full resistance there, so almost no voltage anymore, but full current. And so what also happens there, of course, if you have more and more and more current going through this, to, through both of the resistors, but the second resistor is, is getting smaller um, and the other resistor, the, um, the golden one is staying constant. So. Um, yeah, now we have 1.7 ampere going through this resistor. We also don't know the resistance value yet. Uh, of course, it's printed on the resistor, but we have not discussed it yet. So from current and voltage, we can calculate load resistance. And as you can see, we go down from 25 ohm all the way down to zero ohm. And from current and voltage, we can also calculate power as the product of the two. Um, and this formula, as you can see, is obviously not the product. I think I've mistyped something there on my keyboard. So let's delete this, put it back in once again with the product. Um, and there we have the power. So for full voltage, but small current, we have only small power. And if we go down, um, the voltage drops a little bit, but the current increases more. So the power should increase. But later on, it should also decrease because then the voltage gets, the, the, the current still increases, but the voltage goes to zero. And so if the voltage goes to zero, we don't have any power anymore. So there's a maximum somewhere in between. Um, I think this 1.75 something uh, watt, that is the maximum power that we can get with this arrangement of this voltage source of this ideal open circuit source voltage and the inner resistance that we have there. And so another question is from all these measured values, how can we get the internal 
source voltage, the open circuit voltage of this source, and how can we get the inner resistance of the source. And so the idea is what we have just calculated in the exercise task before is to, to plot a diagram, and the diagram is there in the menu, and yeah, Excel and all these Office spreadsheet programs are not really good in showing you good diagrams, but this is what we want to have there, um, an XY chart, and we want to not only have points, but we want to connect them by some line. And now on the, on the x-axis, we have the current. Of course, as real scientists, we should put um, our quantity symbols and units there, but it's exactly the same diagram as what we have just uh, drawn by hand a couple of minutes ago. So on the horizontal axis, this is the current. On, on the vertical axis, this is the voltage. And if we prolong this curve to zero current, this would be the open circuit voltage. This should be four volts in this case. And if I remove the sheet of paper from the lab power supply, you can see, oh, it's really four volts. So this totally makes sense. And now the second question is, okay, how can we get the inner resistance, the resistance of this golden uh, resistor there that you have seen in my setup, in my measurement setup, in the experimental setup. And the resistance we can get from the slope of this curve, that's also um, printed somewhere, the, the m, the, the slope of this linear function. And so we can get the slope from the short circuit current. And the short circuit current is the current that we have at almost zero terminal voltage. And then from the open circuit voltage and from the short circuit current, we can calculate our inner resistor. And the short circuit current, as you can see there, is something like 1.8, uh, 1.75 maybe um, ampere. And so four volts divided by 1.75 ampere gives uh, a little more than two ohms. So I think some student has calculated this with the calculator, it's 2.28 ohm. And this is what should be also written. And that's why I make the camera window a little larger. This should be also written on this resistor. And so, oh, then I found out, oops, um, I was almost burning my fingers because the, the, the lab power supply was switched on all the time. And for like the remaining two or three minutes while we were plotting this diagram, uh, and there you can see it's a 2.2 ohm resistor. Uh, there it is. And in the meantime, it was getting really, really hot because we had 1.7 ampere, if you remember, 1.75 ampere, the, the short circuit current um, flowing through this resistor and the power that is then lost and dissipated in this resistor is current squared times the resistance. So 1.75 squared is around 3.5, let's say, and this um, multiplied with the 2.2 ohm um, gives us roughly, let's say, 7, 8 watts of power. And 7, 8 watts of power is not that much, but if it's dissipated within the small volume and um, over the small surface area of this power resistor, then it's already quite a lot. And so, yeah, what we just calculated before, we have measured here, you can see a, a very nice agreement between these two curves, the voltage current characteristic of a linear voltage source with some inner resistance, so a real voltage source, voltage source with some series resistance. And I invited every student to that was uh, present in the room to shortly but carefully touch this resistor uh, to note that it's really, really hot <laughs> and that you can almost burn your fingers with it. And yeah, this is what then I've shown in this small, nice, concise demonstration and experiment on the maximum power transfer theorem and the voltage current characteristic of a source, of a real voltage source.